Hey everybody, welcome. It is Monday, May 30th, 3 p.m. Central here in Chicago, Illinois, USA. It's a lovely day outside. I think I have not been outside yet. It is Memorial Day here in the U.S. Um, hey, Frostcoin, welcome. Yeah, it's been a while. So, several things. We got some, before we continue, some news items. First of all, we have the latest uh, video log update. So, for those of you, hey, I'm live right now, it's streaming. But uh, for those of you that are, haven't seen this yet, I'm doing these weekly video updates um, about Manifold Garden. So if you can't catch the stream or whatever, or you've, you've missed a few, I, I think it's not as fun to look at them, look at the archives, but this is sort of like a quick two minute summary about some of the highlights from this past week of development. Um, another thing, Wait, so let me first go and post, go ahead and post on Twitter, let everyone know that I'm now live. Jared Huntley, welcome, and uh, several, several Irene's, uh, hello, um, I, I do, uh, so that is my YouTube channel, archive of past videos are there, um, I think there's like a social media pop-up on the other corner, um, I actually thought it was several airlines at first. Um, other very exciting news is that... Um, let me see here. Ah, right. Uh, I've made a... put out a call for playtesters. So we are starting up the first round of beta testing for Manifold Garden. So if you are interested in that, um, sign up here. I will post the link in the chat. Um, but yes, now do keep in mind, this is signing up by participating in this. You're basically going to end up getting the game spoiled for you. Um, But, uh, wow, so far I've got about uh, 41 responses, so that's, that's pretty good. Uh, I like to try to get maybe 100 or 200 people in this, um, in this list this first time. So I think I'm going to wait for about uh, for a week. But yeah, there's, we're using the HIO desktop app, so there's going to be like a private forum. And you can, if you, this is for people who are interested in helping the game, the design of the game, be refined and and uh, and tweet throughout. Um, sadly, not enough time to check it out. Ah, uh, that's too bad. But um, yeah, and there'll be other other opportunities for playtesting later on. I think this first group is much more um, intensive. And uh, hello, Matthew Vander... Vander. He's trying to get stuff set up. So, now 
Now, I've got a quick test. Um, don't pay too much attention to what's happening on the screen. Because I do need to... Anyway, so that's, that's it. On Friday, I'm going to be uh, heading off to New York for Kill Screen Festival. Oh, so let me know how the audio is for my voice. I know some people have mentioned in the past that it's a little bit quiet, and I've tweaked the settings a bit, and I think it's a lot better. Uh, Matthew, but how did you how did you download the Dropbox? I think it's it's just like uh, you just download it once, or you can also just you don't have to go through the desktop app. By the way, awesome volume is good. Mm. Hello, major idea. Welcome everybody. So, yeah, excited to finally get to that stage and start testing. It's um, it's definitely. You know, I'm at that point where going to conventions and having people stand there and play for an hour is no longer an effective solution. Do I need to register on HIO? No. I mean, we will. What I will do is I will send out uh, HIO keys for the people that that are going to be in it. Um, an efficient solution sounds pretty effective to me. Which, what solution are you talking about? Um, like it, it just meant like I, I don't, I'm finally at that point where it's like, okay, going to conventions to test is no longer cost effective or a good thing to do. Um, so, but yeah, I'm very excited to finally start testing the build like this and getting people talking. Is everything in your world space moving along a grid? Um... It seems like your pivots move in increments are much slower than when I use them. Uh, I do have a grid. I'm using uh, pro grids, and then I also do like this is like a one by one. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by the speed though. Um, yeah, I use pro grids, and I have it at 0.25. Oh, wonderful, Jared. That's awesome. I will see you there then. I guess we'll finally meet um, in person. So I mostly need numbers and different PC specs. Um, not so much. I mean, the the PC specs is more for me to. What do you mean with the PC specs? Like I put that in the um, in the survey mostly because so I can get an idea of what people's systems are, so I can try to figure out the minimum specs uh, while testing on this, so um, that's not like a cutoff point, actually. I'm, I'm, it's more like, you know, trying to kill two birds with one stone kind of thing. Anyway, how's everyone's uh, how's everyone's weekend? Or I guess if you're if you're in the U.S., it's technically still your weekend. How's that going?
Important little games. Hello. Yes. Great weekend. Went ahead, put your name on the list. Yes. Monday for me here already. Yeah, it is Monday here right now. Just pitch a new game concept for the next half year. Hope it gets accepted. What is that for? Yeah, that's um I was just testing out something. It's supposed to go to go to another area, but that one's broken right now. By the way, I think I'm going to get Tom on the line. The dark mode is sort of one of the, my favorite parts, but that's sort of a kind of a spoiler thing. I just needed to test that um, to get back to Tom. Uh, I just didn't know how H was doing stuff. A lot of times it ends up being that you need to be running the app. Oh no, yeah, I don't think it's like that. Yeah. Um, Third year soon, we have to pitch a project for the fourth year. It's concept about handling obstacles in different and unexpected ways. Talk to a rock to get it out of the way. Sneak past the final boss of the game. So that's actually an interesting, that reminds me of this one. Um, I was talking to Lucas Pope. He made Papers, Please. And many years ago he made this, uh, before he worked at Naughty Dog, I think he was actually, he was like an indie in the 90s. Um, so it's like a really tough time. But they made this game where you were fighting this giant rat. Uh, that was like a mother rat and the solution there was the well they ended up putting two solutions which is a mistake the solution that they wanted was that you had to attack the rat's children and then the mother would go to protect them and then you can sneak you can run past the mother rat um but a lot of people had a hard time figuring that out so what they did was they made it so that there was just a way to sneak past the, the mother rat. But then as a result, everybody just did that instead of doing the cool solution. So he, he told me like, he's like, if you, if you have a cool solution, don't, like just because people aren't getting the good solution doesn't mean you should put an easy solution. Cause what'll happen is if players can do that, they will do that way. I have still not played Undertale. Um, let's use some of the tools that uh, Tom checked out. Some of these tools added to Symmetry Tools Test Scene. So let's check out some of these new tools that Tom made. These are some of the Radio Symmetry Tools. So. Yes, um, definitely sign up for the beta testing if you're interested in that. Hey! 
Hey, Game Dev Company, thank you for the thank you for hosting. Really appreciate it. Um, let's check out some of these tools. I might give Tom a call. Actually. Let me see. Okay, we are going to give Tom a call. So... Hey, Tom. Hey, how's it going? Okay, good. How are you? Doing good. Okay, so just uh, you are you are on the stream, by the way. Okay. Cool. Um, let me you know, let me see if I can raise up the Skype audio a bit. Um, what a test, test, test. Test. Yeah. Okay. Everybody cool. in the chat, let us know if you can hear Tom. Okay. So Tom, for those of you that don't know, Tom is the programmer that's working on the game. Tom joined about. Last last week, yeah. Last week was yeah. your first week. How was that? Uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. Where is my world's best boss mug? It hasn't come yet. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I've been watching The Office, but maybe maybe Michael Scott is not the best um, role model. <laughs> Probably not. But, yeah. um, anyway, so I wanted to. Yeah, I had a thing with the uh, the audio visual tool. I have. Um, you know, I put it in World Zero Zero One, and I end up getting that error. Um, um can you go to your uh, build settings? And sure. Make sure. Oh, that did I need to add? To, well, yeah. So, I just thought of it as soon as you said you were. I do have that in there. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to. I mean, yeah, I'm. I'm redoing the same thing that you're doing just to see what happens. Okay. Um, because I had it pop up, but I was missing that from my build settings. I see, I see. Um, yeah. And then the other thing, you know, I'm going to do screen share. Um, besides, we need to rewrite that that system um, so that it's tree-specific and not scene-specific. Yeah. Um, but let me, let me set up a screen share because what I would like to do is go over the, um, the radial tools. I was wondering if you can walk us over that. Um, by the way, hello, Data1992 and Ethan Beer Line. Uh, yeah, I think about 100, 200 people for the beta. Um, so you can see my screen? Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See okay. Um, so yeah, can you walk us over this um, this tool that you made? I uh, had a look at it. How exactly does it does it work? Um, yeah, so basically if you click on the uh, symmetry tool. Yeah. Uh, there are two buttons just for creating a new radial object and a linear object. Right. And then there's the R00 and then the L001, right. stuff like that. So do I start off always with a empty object? Is yeah. That, okay. If you're making this all from, from scratch, yeah. You'd have an empty object, you'd add the symmetry tool component. It's a symmetry tool component on that. And then you need the um, uh, gameplay prototype. Was the other component I was using? Gameplay like, prototype. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm, that was I'm wondering it. if uh, 
we should have this so it's like a a drop down you know it just inside mm-hmm. you have i don't know miscellaneous and it's like uh or something where it just it just automatically oh, creates a symmetry tool i think that makes it even easier as yeah. opposed to having to like pick up something and drag it in yeah yeah i haven't messed around with yeah. that that folder yet or that um yeah it's pretty simple right i mean it's basically just like automating this process and they're just yeah, naming definitely. it like symmetry tool object yeah mm-hmm. So you now you add that you have these two scripts. What do what do I do? Just click one of those. Click radial. Okay, let's click radial. And then that created an object inside. Oh, so I see. It. Okay. Then you click that one. This is all your stuff that you need. Um, so if you grab like, um, see that? It's the object just above the radial symmetry tool, like obj underscore zero zero. Yeah. Yeah. If you drag that into the, yeah. This into that guy, yeah. And then you can set setting up the fields and it will uh oh, shit. you have to put a few in there before it'll yeah, before you can start really seeing it. Um axis I always pick a single direction, so like one and X or Y. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and then you can adjust the starting angle. Mm, and then really that's for the actual the animation is the rotation speed. Sick. Um, and I had a uh, a play, pause, and stop functionality that yeah. I I broke like a couple hours ago. Right. Oh, I see. So. Okay. Yeah. So you used to be able to have it animate as well while you're in the editor. Right. Uh, I was adding the linear symmetry tool as well, and right. then I did something, and I was trying to figure out what exactly I did. Uh, yeah. So see, yeah, I'm definitely definitely the having the drop down is going to be very helpful because even now I'm yeah. trying to like. I end up having to do this thing where I'm duplicating it, deleting, uh, and then now I hit linear, right? Mm -hmm. I think all that would be super helpful. So if I wanted to take this object, um, drag it in, and I start doing like... Yeah, they give it uh, an axis as well. Oh, right an now, axis. it's just right. it's just it's going like on top of each, on top of itself. Uh, what exactly is the axis? Does that do I need um, to? That's just like that's a bad word for it for this one. I kind of left everything the same as it was before, but oh, that's I see. the direction it's going, and then you can right. adjust the distance between each one, right. and then uh, angle for this. Yeah. It it does a staggered rotation, so if you adjust the angle a little bit, it will. Oh shit! Do like a helix. Damn. Like okay. This this is cool. Um, hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. This is very nice. Okay, I'm trying to think about how we're gonna have to work on some. Yeah, I like this. Um, I think there's like a few things that we will need to tweak. Mm-hmm. But. Um, you, you know, so like, okay, a few ideas off the top of my head right now. So definitely like the drop down menu, and we should maybe put yeah, this I'll in, add, that's, inside yeah, Trello. Um, uh, so we have our. Um, where is that? Uh, tech to do. So we'll talk about radial symmetry tool. It's it's really solid though. Uh, let's just, you know what? Let's just talk about symmetry tool and a few ideas I have here. Sure. Um, so um, a uh, menu drop down button. To create a basic symmetry object, and I think like something um, like once this is done, 
to export it or something. I guess would I just simply drag it out of the symmetry object? Like, yeah, you could leave it there or take it out. Um, I had some other ideas. The, the way I was going with the tool at first is slightly different than where it is now. Mm -hmm. So if you keep adding, if you keep hitting like new, it'll keep throwing it underneath that object and it'll increment them so they'll be numbered nicely. So if you just hit like new a couple more times, it'll be like an, another oh, one right. at the bottom. So I was just thinking of a way to organize it. Yeah. So that you're not hitting new and having things just appear everywhere. Right. Yeah. I really like, I think this is a really solid, because I want to use this to generate level geometry as well. Um, for me, designing some of the, the levels. This is already a huge help for one of the levels that I've got working on. But I'm also thinking with the audio-visual stuff that this is very helpful. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think we're going to just keep kind of keep playing around with this for a bit. But I got a good... So, yeah, let's get that... Um, just uh, let me know how the, the audio-visual transitions to that is. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think I can go ahead... So I would do that before the symmetry tool just because I think we got a really solid foundation now. And once the... Um, uh, once that audio-visual transition is done, I can basically go ahead and make a build out for the PS4. Uh, and then, and that will be, we'll send that out to the beta testers. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I had, um, switching it over to the, to the dark tree, yeah. the, all that information, I already moved that all over, and it seemed to be working the same as it was before. Okay. Um, meaning that I was having the same issue you just had, where it wasn't recognizing the scene. So oh, you also you also had that issue. Yeah, I just had it. Oh, okay, now. got it, got it. But it, um, it was it working before? Yeah, well, I mean, it it's working for um, audiovisual scene one, but then I made another audiovisual scene and it wasn't working for that one. Mm. So I was, I was, yeah, I'm curious as to why it's only working for index one and not. Okay, two. I mean, just to show you the way I have the audiovisual scenes organized is they are, they're in this uh, yeah I put them in the audio visual scene there was another one in test scenes i've deleted that yeah, and then yeah they that was go inside big. the audio visuals there's a one optimized mm -hmm. um, which when you when you hit play by the way it automatically sends it to the build settings yeah that's what yeah. i was thinking but okay. uh i know i deleted some of mine so that's why some things were like not working. Okay. Um, well, just just yeah. Let me know when when that's ready, and I'll do. I'll start using this in some of the other levels, and then kind of give you feedback on on this tool. But yeah, it looks really cool. Cool. Awesome. Sweet. Thanks, Tom. I have no problem. All right. Bye. Bye. Right. So that was. Uh, by the way, thanks everyone. Um, Data nineteen ninety two currently studying game program at a German university and we'd like to know how the gameplay works. Are you talking about the gameplay for Manifold Garden specifically? Um, by the way, that was Tom Hoffman. He is the uh, programmer on the project now. It started last week. Um, it's called Hochschule Haas, a University of Applied Sciences. The city's part of a master called Media and Game Conception. This was gameplay many years before I started my bachelor. Okay, so see, this is a level. Well, <laughs> uh, I kind of wish I had this before. And uh, hello, Gruz. Welcome. Welcome back. Then be your line. By the way, if you're new, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Tell us a bit about uh, what brings you here today, and uh, what do you what are you up to normally? The True Blue TJ, you've been playing at the Cologne Game Lab early next year. Oh, nice. Is that a is that like a game study program? I think the closest we have here is the NYU uh, Masters program. They have the incubator as well. Oh, 
Oops, sorry about the audio. I am much louder than usual. Well, I, I changed the setting. I think a lot of people told me that I was much quieter uh, than, than most of the other streams. So I just made the audio setting, but um, hopefully people can just hear me better. Um, so I'm trying to think about how I can make this a lot more interesting. Um, So let's use this tool that Tom made. Um, okay, so Tom said, see, this is why we need that tool, right? Because otherwise I constantly have to like, you know, smoke come out of those things to that nerd so I haven't worked out the game this weekend but I have been having a good time and I think I'm getting much better ideas on how to proceed that don't break everything that's good um A second, uh, William. I currently attend a community college for computer science. I will then transfer to a university for a bachelor's. Stop by your channel to get inspiration for your first game RPG game. That nerd, thank you for stopping by. And you know, actually, Tom, um, program I was just chatting to, Tom actually did that. He went to a community college for about two years and then moved on to uh, DePaul to finish his degree. And I think that seems like a really really smart way of doing it um, wow man this tool is fucking good I've had to place them all individually for a while This part is a little bit weird. Is that just the, um... Like, why is this whole... What the fuck? 
It's like I can't vertex snap on this. It's it it thinks the vertex is like somewhere else. What in the world? You know, I'm like snap to this guy here. some problems. Interesting. Damn, we should make... So, yeah, it seems like there's something with the code is like tripping up the selection problem a little, so... Like, one thing I would like is for this to kind of automatically create... Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. So see, it needs a tool. This is another thing. You guys saw what was happening. There we go. It's like, okay. Also not sure if we should rename the things. Uh, yeah. To use Unreal Engine, but no, I'm not sure where to start. Blueprint or C++? Uh, unfortunately, I have not used uh, Unreal myself, so I can't really comment on that. Shader Forge really helps making shader. Uh, the thing to keep in mind with Shader Forge, though, is that it doesn't do. You can't do post processing shaders. So it is really good for materials, but. Um, like, because I got that. I got Shader Forge thinking I, I would use it to help me figure out my edge detection shader, and I, in the end, it was. I did have to sort of learn things on my own um, and work with the code. So it is handy. I think it's. it's if you're a programmer, I would probably recommend just trying to understand shaders, learning that. Um, the thing with Shader Forge is it's not, it's really tricky to try to like read their like shader generated code. Um.
Wow, this tool is so much better than what I was doing before. I was having to actually move each one by hand. What a nightmare. Node-based stuff is good for shaders. By the way, guys, I think I'm going to stop doing the coffee time thing. <laughs> because, uh... I think it's actually making it hard for me to sleep at night. I'm going to try not to drink coffee like after 3 p.m. End up getting into this vicious, vicious cycle. Of not getting enough sleep at night. Then... Feeling sleepy in the afternoon, then needing to drink coffee, then making me not able to sleep at night. So, I'm gonna try to axe that. Yeah, less coffee. I might just do tea. Because I think, I don't think I can totally get off the caffeine train just yet. like to try to become I don't know it sounds pretty crazy though I don't think I want to give up coffee entirely but I'm gonna save it for the mornings hey bold big flank how are you doing how are you enjoying this fine this lovely weather we have in Chicago right now summer is finally here Oh yeah, by the way, for those of you that have watched those YouTube videos, uh, took the dogs to the park. Oh man, I want to, I really want to get a dog. Um, I just don't know with all the traveling. Oh man, dude, I had a, I had a broke, I didn't have AC installed, uh, some time ago and it was brutal. Yeah. Like, I think last week before I installed it, it was easily 90 degrees inside. So yeah, I feel you. Um, what kind of dog do you have? For Unity, but Unreal has a lot of nice things about it. I would like a medium-sized one. The words of my friend a real dog I had a my roommates many years ago had a rat terrier um, and I kind of for me that was like the perfect size yeah maybe I'll look into sheltering one the thing is I travel so much um, with game shows and whatnot, that it's super difficult. Hey, da boy! Hello. Yeah, her name was Juicebox. 
Oh, whoa. Oh, that must be brutal in the, um, in the summer. You have a chihuahua. Uh, a rat terror is actually a thing. That was not a rat terrier. Phil Tibitoski of the um, of the Young Horses is a big pug fan. He's always going on and on. Oh, <laughs> Dan, she was like this big, decent size. Personal game dev time. I just feel like because I work from home that having a dog would actually be really nice since like I'm able to, you know, take it out for walks during the day and so on. say this is like um, level one And uh, Becca Saltzman, yeah, they're they've got the dog in the um, in their game Overland. Yeah, I'm getting a roommate next year that's also a game developer. Um, some of you guys might know him. Of Aerobat. But, um... Oh, how are you liking Dark Souls 3 so far? The thing is, because both of us are in the game industry, then our travel schedules end up being pretty similar. Um, but I was gonna say, you know, if you had a, um... If you had a roommate that worked in a different industry, that could be helpful. Hey, Ding Game Sean. Devin goes well. Have you not, Matthew, have you not beaten Steven Sausage Roll yet? Oh, so I have stopped playing Infamous Second Son and Shadow of Mordor. Um, they both had interesting things, but just too much of the same thing over and over again. Um, like, Infamous Second Son, the city was very cool, but the combat is pretty broken. Like, it's very easy to spam it. Um... <laughs> Major idea. Have you started playing that? I like it pretty well. It's not as good as the first one, but it's really good. Sometimes it feels like it's pandering to Dark Souls fans. Interesting. I mean, at this point, what is pandering to Dark Souls fans? 
like difficulty for the sake of difficulty, I guess. Yeah, I probably don't. I mean, is it it's like snakebird level? I don't know if their their dog specifically is in Overland. I just know that they've got dogs in Overland. Okay, guys, we're gonna do a quick test with this um, thing that Tom added. Um, hmm. Mostly, I want to get it fixed before the day ends. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they put their dog. Snake bird is easy, okay. <laughs> yeah, I need to get that. The thing is, like, I really, I think that game would be perfect for a uh, puzzle analysis with uh, Kevin Zoon. Um... definitely take a lot of time. Alright, so let's go and check out. We got this new... Ryand, um, what if English is on average level? That is fine. Yeah. If if you can, as long as you're, you can, happy to give feedback. That is fine. Yeah. Hey, the boy. What did I study? I studied physics and economics in college. Um, from the University of Chicago. Jacket A, you've got a dog as well. Your page isn't available, by the way. Yes. By the way, so for those of you that are new, we are starting a... Uh, there is a call for doing the first round of beta testing for Manifold Garden. So I believe that is the link. Um, but yes. Um, now, just a word of warning is that you will be spoiling the game. So there's going to be a private forum that we'll be using to kind of discuss stuff. And with this first round, the game is not yet finished. So the game isn't finished. What I am doing is, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be sending out the game as it is. And mostly at this point, it's because the stuff I'm interested in testing is like two, three hours into the game. So the game isn't finished, but I'm in that like middle, late stages. And it just doesn't make sense for me to go to conventions and stand around and see if people get through the first hour before getting to the interesting stuff. I mean, there's interesting stuff before. It's just that from a playtest play testing standpoint, I've seen those like about a thousand times by now. I'm not even kidding. I, I think there's been over a thousand playtesters for the opening area. So. The 
dog. I can't see your link, by the way, Jacket. Hey, Starlight Skies, how you doing? Um, how is the long weekend treating you, and how was your 12-hour long stream? By the way, Starlight Skies is a, another uh, game developer uh, who streams on a regular basis, does a lot of art and 3D modeling. Um, the ideal number of testers is five. Where'd you get that number from? So... Um, yeah, so that's, if you don't want to do it in this round, there are other, I, there are going to be other rounds of beta testing. But like, the later you wait, the more of a complete version of the game you're going to get. Um, this one is explicitly like, this game is broken and we're trying to fix it. Um, so... Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna get Tom's latest version. T. Huffman. Yeah, five? I don't... Why, why five? That seems so small. Phew. Um... It's also crazy for me. People work on games for, like, a year, and then they, then they start playtesting, whereas for me, I, I always start doing that super early. Oh, you know Jared as well. Oh, right, Jared's from Ohio. Oh, huh, interesting. Why well, you only need to test with five users? Huh. Interesting, interesting. Zero users give zero insights. Well... <laughs> Your insights shoot up and you have already learned almost a third of all there is to know. I think this is usability though, which is slightly different from puzzle design. Um, but, but this is, um... You do learn less and less. Um... But I think... You need to test additional users when a website has several highly distinct groups of users, which I think is applicable here. Um, right, because you have people that are really into puzzle games, and then you have, like, more casual gamers. And uh, hello, Gobfather. Interesting. Oh, that is a good dog. That dog looks very happy. Uh, hey, Gobfather, good morning to you, too. Um, let's see here. Uh, so let's talk about... Um, obviously, whatever is going to happen during the, uh, the... With the beta testing is going to remain confidential, so... There, there's going to be kind of a private conversation going on there. Okay, well... That is awesome. And I really, really appreciate... Let's test this. I don't take it too seriously, but it's important to understand you are actually paying for testing, which I never am other than with my time and emotional stability. It is a lot of work, um, yeah.
Um, you're probably right, but I think part of it too is also not those. I think just with how this is set up, not everyone is going to be giving a lot of, um, you know, may maybe like a tenth of the people will be participating or something. And I have, though, I have noticed, um, even in the later stages of the opening level, I've noticed a lot of feedback that I hadn't seen before, so... Yes, Rick Ryan, that's awesome. Um, really glad to hear that. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun doing those. They're like a really good break from... Um, I'm looking down now because I don't want to... Um, what the hell? Hey, Hatniks. Man, we have a lot of people from Germany today. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I don't know why this is not working though, it's the weirdest thing. Oh, I know why. King Dragon 2713, hello. Um, I don't know, I mean, no, it's just more people get busy, they, they have good intentions, but... It's not always, uh... Sometimes... Sometimes life gets in the way. Smack it with a two by four. A mod for the game? I would have liked the game to be mod friendly, but it is a lot of work, and that's sort of something you have to basically design from the ground up. Oh, I think I know why the reason is. It's because um, I didn't create the optimized version. Optimized version wasn't updated. Um, by the way, if you are enjoying the stream and, and you like the channel, remember to follow. And also, if you're new, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Lots of really cool people here. Talking about game development, etc. I am gonna kind of be looking down because I don't want. Hey, Calvin's Dilemma, how you doing? getting to a point how do I optimize a game you don't want to do it too early but with code with um what the hell did 
Jared Huntley, thank you for the follow. Hmm. Why is it not looking for the audio visual level not found? Oh shit, it's because I'm only loading one scene? Save optimization for when... Yeah, optimizing a game, you don't want to be... Um, what kind of VART style is this? Uh, I'm not sure, like edge detection, um, hand-drawn. May I say that the cube and guiding lines do not match the graphic style of the rest? Um, which part are you talking about? Were you just talking about the crazy weird thing? That was, that was a test. That was not, uh, that was not going into the game yet. Yeah, you want to you don't want to optimize too early because otherwise then when you really need that extra space you end up getting screwed up. Oh, by the way, hello El Sol car. Um Yes. Yeah, thank you Apoc Rage. Um yeah, that's actually another piece of advice I got from Lucas Pope cuz he said one of the tricks that you have as an engine programmer, he was a tools programmer at Naughty Dog. He said, um, don't, um, you know, you don't want to optimize too early, otherwise the artist will make art to fill that. Um, you want to have some, know that you have space later. The, unfortunately, True Blue TJ, um, whoa, Hat Nix, thank you for the follow. There is actually no general way to optimize. You have to really just do it. It depends on the game you're making, and it's like the more... The more you work on the game, the better idea you have of what it is, the more stuff you can trim away. Because a lot of times what happens is early on in development, you're taking like a much more general approach to things and then you're like, okay, well, you know, we're not going to do this and this and that so we can just eliminate all the code for that and just hone in on exactly what we have to do. So there's no, I mean, there's a lot of examples. Like I've written these tools to optimize the time, my time. We combine, we form all the meshes. So like right now you can see it's loading all the scenes at the beginning instead of at runtime. So that's another, that's another thing. But again, those are, they're not like general, there's no like general path to optimization. It, it's different for every game. Yeah, so it's like, it's not, there's no specific technique. It's just, you just have to realize that it's a thing, it's a process that you have to do. the side perpendicular to gravity colored yeah it's whatever surface is down that's colored at the moment Ugh. I think I'm getting some performance issues because of these coroutines
Okay, Starlet Skies, I will see you later. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. By the way, old Silk, thank you for the follow. Hmm. Hey, Zeitwise. This is just the loading screen? No. Short cutscene segment. There is something to do there. It's not, that was like the first attempt at it, so it's still pretty broken. It's a nice Apple friendly style. What's Apple friendly? Uh, any plans for beta on Mac? Uh, not for a while. That's gonna be... I want to work on the design stuff first. Um, so the Apple will be more like a tech thing. Though I am going to take a quick break. So I will be right back. All right, break is over. Develop a game. Guys, where I find an idea. Guys, finding an idea for games is easy. Um, the answer, I have not really answered the thing about the fractal. Uh, yeah, we're... 
Let me try that again. It's hard, but getting the game done is much harder. Yeah. It was to just start with like a rough idea and then keep iterating. I took 10 minutes for me to come up with the idea for this game, at least the first idea, and it took, it's taken three and a half years to try to bring it to life, so, but start small. You do want to have a good idea, but it's not, um, don't, don't get too caught up with that, just start prototyping. Yeah, but the thing is, it's hard to, the thing with ideas is it's hard to know whether they're good or not until you start prototyping. So, there's no point trying to come up with, like, as in, like, you should just start making stuff. Yeah, like... You know, start you off trying to make a, a minimalist runner, but as you start making it, kind of keep prototyping and explore how you can branch off from there. Trust me, you know a good idea when you see one. <laughs> but yeah, you got to refine the idea as you go. Um, see, for me, it's like I don't even, when people tell me their game ideas, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the best ideas for this game didn't come until, like, two, three years in. You know, the war wrapping wasn't there at the beginning, and yet it's such a major part of what the game is. Um, you know, the, the name didn't come about until two, three years in. So... What do you think about the game, Will? Uh, which game <laughs> is this? I mean, I just have to play it. A MOBA MMO in space. Man, all the all the stuff with the death threats, by the way. That um, did you get the link? I did not get the link. But uh, Ezio, unfortunately, I probably won't be able to play anything until uh, after E3. Oh, you sent it on Twitch. I didn't see it, actually. Hmm. <laughs> Nightbot. Nightbot's is doing its job. Um, how do I... The Twitch interface is all kind of weird. Sharp.
It's always good to break the rules if you want to find an idea. I don't know if I'll be on long here. Well, Zeus Marlis, thanks for dropping by, by the way. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's just pretty crazy. I mean, I kind of wish I were getting that much hype. Um, though, maybe not. I don't really want to get death threats. Uh, Zeus, how are you still house-sitting? Mobile shooters from the bird perspective. Uh, things are well. We're, you know, trying to get ready for the first round of beta testing. Heading off to New York on Friday. We got the new video update. That seems to be very well received, so I'm definitely going to keep doing those now. Can keep continuing doing those, and then finally, um, yeah, just just getting the game ready for E3. Um, I think getting back into a good rhythm now. Um, oh no, no death threats. Oh shit. do I sign up? Thank you. How can you even handle the infinitely moving architecture? sentence is this? Oh, the travel card. Uh, Tom understands. Yeah.
Okay, so we got this level three left. Threat to send unpleasant pictures of my ugly face if I don't get into the... Yeah, so the Mac beta is going to be quite a while because there's the, the problem with the Mac beta is that I don't have a Mac right now to test on. So what ends up being... So it's tricky because that means that I can't... Like, a lot of the feedback I'm going to get is not... Like, right now I'm just interested mainly in design issues. And with the Mac one, I'm going to be getting stuff like... Um... um you know, hey, the shader's not working. Um, man, maybe I shouldn't have shown that. There's going to be sort of, sort of, sort of. There's those, those things play... A role. It's still the first attempt. We're just trying to get them going in and out of them working. Opeth. Hello. Opeth, how in the world do you remember how many... How do you remember your username? And, uh, and welcome. And, uh, how do I get this grid on your mesh? Is there an option I can toggle on? Are you talking about this mesh? That's a... That comes with Pro Builder. But yeah, Jacket 8. So there are... There's going to be, that's going to be a lot of, um, 20 underscores, easy. Um, there's going to be, they're going to play a role and there's going to be some procedural generation in that. Um, oh, Red Garlic, you got a new username. Yeah, but those mainly serve as an opportunity for me to just kind of play with some crazy visuals. I don't often get that opportunity with the game because it's you're so often worried about, you know, is this fitting with the gameplay or are players going to get confused? And we sort of carved out a little area where I can go crazy without having to worry about that. Um, so that's basically what I'm doing By the way, Zeus, you can check out the uh, the newest video, um, which I posted. You might have remember, you might have seen that. Um, it's on the YouTube channel. By the way, I do. If you guys want to check out uh, video updates uh, and past archives. Hey, Sinocron, hello. Yes, yeah, that one, it is, it is pretty hardcore spoiler-rich. Um, well, I think I know your real name, Zeus. So, yeah, we just did the second one, so that talks about... That's, if you, like, miss streams, you know, I, I want to make that... I feel like this can be a lot shorter. Is the Pro Builder free version good? Yes. Yes, yes, yeah. The also oh, just like my hands were starting to hurt. Um Cool, that's that's alright. I think you can also edit your responses, by the way. But yeah, I'm gonna give it about a week for people to sign up, and then we will. I'll post. I'll kind of send out the new the the first build will get sent out early next week. Perfect. 
Okay. And of course, there's a few things, right, which is like, uh, you know, there, there, there is an NDA you'll need to kind of check off before you're able to download the game. But obviously what what's, what is there is confidential uh, at the moment. And don't, don't go around complaining about the game because it is not finished. <laughs> Uh, don't put it on Pirate Bay. <laughs> At least not yet. <laughs> um. Hey, Chill Sky! Thank you for the follow. How are you doing, Chill Sky? And welcome to the channel. Opeth, thank you for the follow. What kind of music sounds have I in mind for the game? Um, no, you can make more complex shapes with Pro Builder. Uh, major idea, I'll see you around. Um, Seth's? What kind of music? Um, probably, I'm not sure yet, actually. That's, the audio is the one thing I haven't really thought about. Eventually, I will need to. Um, but Pro, Pro Builder is great, yeah. You can do more than just boxes. Just excited for a chance to be able to help with development in some way. Awesome, man. Thanks so much. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited about it because I think the refinery kind of fixes some of the problems with Steam Early Access. Um, it's not really Steam's fault. I think it's just like it's too big. Steam is just too big for its own good, at least when it comes to Early Access. You know, like, you just have too much of an audience there, and then people don't quite understand that those, those games are not meant to be complete. But then you also have devs that just launch their games way before it should be on that. Um, I don't know, I just see too many games now. And obviously with a first-person exploration puzzle game that doesn't work quite as well. Am I putting this on the itch.io refinery? Yeah, it's it's really it's that's just uh, it's just itch.io by the way. Um, yeah, so this is very much like only sign up for this if you want to play. So I'm messing with the refiner. I'm really digging it. I'm using it for my impending closed beta. Closed alpha. Um, yeah, I guess technically it should be alpha. But, um... Right. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is. I think they're doing a great job, like, and they're they're really open to feedback. So, you know, I told them, I was like, you know, one thing I would like is sort of this, um, 
kind of automating that NDA signing process, um, right? Just having a checkbox that people have to check off before they download uh, the build. And they were just like, yeah, you know, we don't have that set up right now, but we'll be happy to do that for you. Uh, you know, we can archive um, um, archive all the the forum posts. So, um, oh, I'm surprised you hadn't heard of itch.io before. Yeah, so we can ar archive all the past forum posts. I think which would be really helpful also once the game comes out, just in terms of um, kind of letting people see how the game develops over time. Um, Pro Builder is one I can think of. There's one called Tilda. I haven't used it, but it's a console. Like, I think a console generally is just a must have. And from what I've seen, Tilda looks like one of the best ones. Eventually, I am I am looking into setting that up to be um, like because it, it's got auto complete and you can add hotkeys very quickly easily. Um, I am looking to to kind of switch over to that soon. So. So it's from you, I just signed up last night. Interesting. Yeah, and they have like, you can choose your distribution system. I mean, the um, the uh, storefront and sales, you know, the dev and storefront share. I think for me, I'm just gonna keep it at 30% because that's like, that's what all the other storefronts are doing and it's like, These are the guys that probably need that 30% more than anybody else. Vulcan API? What is that? Oh wait, is that the new rendering system? Vulcan and uh, why do you want that for Doom? going to fix a lot of issues with it. Oh, right. I see. I haven't heard people talking about performance issues with the new Doom. It is so tedious though. is running 60 FPS, right? It's triple A games running 60 FPS making us indies look bad.
Um, yeah, by the way, for those of you that have watched the YouTube development update video, let me know, are there, is there anything you'd like me to cover um, in future updates? Uh, MG does run at 60 FPS, but it is really, really hard to do. Um, like, it's, it's very, um, it runs 60 FPS on the, on the PS4, the first level, but there are later areas that are, that cause problems. The, the, it's not, it's actually much harder, what's hard is staying at 60 consistently, right? Like, the problem is if you're dropping down to 30 and then back up to 60, I think that's worse than just staying consistently at 30. Um... Hey, uh, Garrett Polk. I've been drinking pink lemonade diluted with water. I mean, obviously they'd rather have it at 60 all throughout, but if you're going between 60 and 30, then you should just lock it to 30. It's much better to have consistency um, at a lower frame rate than consistent frame rate. In my humble opinion. Garrett, how are you doing? How is, uh, how is LA treating you? part of the year where I don't need AC yet. Oh, come on. This is going to take forever to try to apply this prefab object. Save batteries or work on the next room. It also makes multi-threading games a lot easier and more consistent across platforms. Garrett, are you just using Steam for that? Right? Like, are people just emailing you feedback, or do you have some kind of forum set up? By the way, I got this uh, pop filter, which makes me feel like a real pro. Come on. Does anybody know how to make applying prefabs not take quite so long? Ah, I see. But Garrett, doesn't doesn't itch have um that forum where you can have discussions going on? Right, Jared, thanks for hanging out. I will see you around. Um, see you in New York, actually. Yes, we'll see you in New York. We will hang out there. Um, all right, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up the stream now because...
Uh, it is almost five o'clock, and I want to wrap up that stream. Uh, this stream. Oh, sh there we go. It worked. That took freaking forever. Um, actually, so you know what? Let's do a quick run through of this level. Um, VM versus Emacs. I use neither. <laughs> so. By the way, hello, Hedge59. I probably, probably Vim. That's the one I used before. Prince of Chiba, hello. Um, welcome and thanks for the follow. Microsoft Word. Hey, Zlar, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the channel. Chris Jackson 84, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the channel. MS Word unsubbed and followed. <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I don't like. Are you talking just programming? I just use Visual Studio. Um, so. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a really, really interesting storefront. Um, you can insert. Yes, yeah, that, that's right. It, uh, it just makes it a lot easier to have, um, you know, different fonts, color coding. Um. <laughs> that's, how, that's how this entire game is programmed in, in Microsoft Word. Oh, interesting. That's a sinocron. That's such an interesting changing which parts of the pipeline need to be changed instead of storing the old pipeline and then loading an entirely new one for every texture. Oh, that's actually pretty handy. Did you guys see the guy, uh, the funniest videos? The guy, uh, like. See, there's like the video of the guy trying to type. Speech recognition. I think he was, uh... Oh, I think it's this video. This video is amazing. Just a software recognition to show you how easy it is. Open Notepad. Maximize. He's like, it's funny because at the beginning Open. he's like, um... <laughs> this is so funny. I'll let you guys watch this.
I think he's trying to get a capital I there. But anyway, it's pretty funny. I want to never speak to my computer unless it's to people at another computer. That's a good approach. Wow, 51 viewers today, and we're not even on the creative channel Jumbletron. So thanks everyone. Um, yeah, it's a real, it's a, it's a hilarious video. What's the connection from Comic Sans to Sans? We are almost done. Oh, I get it. Hmm. Okay, I have not actually played Undertale yet, but man, this uh this Unity Prefab apply thing is crazy hard. It takes way too long. Come on, yes. Okay. We are now going to. the build of the game. Create an empty object not in use. controlling the triangle limit of your scenes or is it unity uh unity is well i mean sorry what's i'm not quite sure what that means like i am getting to choose how much i want in the scene right oh fuck
what am I using to stop them from? We just we set a hard limit. Yeah, I mean we're not really repeating in the behind the scenes. It's all it's all smoke, magic and smoke. Technological wizardry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am controlling it. Uh, I mean, I just didn't understand what you meant by the triangles. I mean, because, like, the meshes... We do combine meshes and merge them, and there is a limit, as Zeus Mondelez said, so we don't have... We can't have the entire scene as one mesh. Um... Is the audio on my webcam off? What worked? Uh, yes. Yes, the new, I don't know, I can't, uh, I mean, the audio doesn't affect me, but it did help when I was recording the audio for the game. Oh shit, that looks sick. Whoa. This is such a cool scene. This is the best looking level so far? Wow, this looks so weird though. Like, it looks very, I don't know, biological? All right, we are going to wrap up the stream. I will see you guys tomorrow. More updates. Uh, of course, and um, yeah, if you're interested in checking out the, uh, if you're interested in beta testing, sign up for that. Link is on Twitter. Um, honeycomb level. This is a honeycomb. No, though you can't though, because the the angles, right? You need. Um, it's not 90 degrees inside. I think this is like the closest we're gonna get, uh, like a beehive. Um, from this angle especially. Oh, well, you know what? Maybe we should, uh, let's see if there's anybody else streaming. We can, um... Guys, Rob the Swan is a developer that I think is doing some really interesting stuff. So we should all, let's swing by Rob's stream. I'm gonna host Rob after this. So, um, so, yeah, let's do a raid on Rob the Swan. Um, so we just say, uh, the raid thing. It's just go in there and say it's cookies all the way down. Let me post that. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys all for stopping by today. I'm going to end the stream and then host, host Rob's stream. So... I will, I well, I want to adopt, so we'll see what they have in the shelter. I'll look into it. But anyway, thanks for hanging out, 
and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.